So once again, everyone, I want to say thank you for being here this morning. I, I do appreciate it. And today I want to talk about um, something that's near and dear to me and I think very important for every trader, but something that is very commonly missed in your um, trading um, plan. You know, a lot of folks kind of uh, pass this by. They don't, they don't focus um, on the preparation that needs to be done for the day. So I wanted to do a quick class, and this isn't going to be a super, super long, heavy, in-depth class. I do have a few slides, but we're going to spend a lot of time looking at just, you know, some charts in how I go through um, this preparation. And, and trust me on this, after 28 years of trading, um, 13 years trading full-time, supporting my family, putting two kids through college, um, this is important stuff. Do not, please do not just shake this off and say, hey, yeah, it's just another guy talking about you know, stuff that really doesn't matter. This is really important. And, and if you follow some of this, you don't have to do exactly what I do, but if you follow some of this procedure here to, to uh, analyze and evaluate the overall condition of the market, it will improve your trading. You'll have more uh, profits and less losses if you're moving with the market rather than um, kind of always being surprised by what the market is doing. So let's take a look and let's let's jump right in here and get going. By the way, if you guys have questions, I will try to answer them. Please keep in mind we do have a lot of folks here today. If you ask a question and I don't get to it, please don't take it personally. And um, feel free to repost it again. Um, I will try to answer as many questions as possible um, that you might have this morning. So f first off, um, when you start thinking about your trading, um, a quote, a, a, this quote always comes to mind to me, and I don't know why, I've, I've always been kind of a Bear Bryant fan, but it's, it's not the will to win that matters. We all have a will to be successful in trading. That's what, but the will to prepare to win is what really matters. It's all that preparation. If you think about any professional sport or any um, any um, major business person out there, it's the preparation that makes the difference in the end result. And we kind of gloss over that way too often in trading. And it's something that I, I really want to bring a, a highlight to, and hopefully everyone can kind of see the importance of this. So I ask a question all the time of folks, is every day a good day to trade? Now I had a mentor uh, that, that I paid as a personal coach for me for years to to help me get to where I am today and I credit I credit that person a lot with being you know that patient person that kept and I got a thick head um, continuously beat into me the importance of doing these very simple things but they, they do take a little bit of time. And it's it's the monotony of most jobs that people hate. They you know, there are some things about every job that people love, but you know, we all love to look at charts and we love to, you know, create scans and, and we love pretty fancy indicators and we love all of those sexy things that that we see, you know, popping up. But we don't tend to do the things that uh, we don't love those those things. It's just the work of being a trader, and that's that's what this is about is is making sure that you understand that today is a good day to trade. And there's several things to consider. My old mentor used to say, um, and I and I don't exactly hold with this, but my old mentor used to say there's only about ten good days every month to enter new positions. And trust me on this, 
um, she trades that way. She's extremely successful and she's never had a job. She learned to trade when she was young from her grandfather and she's never done anything other than trade her entire life. So there's something to that, right? If someone can say something like that, if someone can be like that, wouldn't it be um, a good idea to kind of listen <laughs> to what they have to say? And and she was very um, very adamant about about that. So how do you go about finding out whether today is a good day to trade, uh, to evaluate that market, or to prepare? For your day so one of the things I, I always want to take a look at is what's the current market trend do we have a trend in the market you know so many people that trade if you're new to trading or whatever you want to be a long only trader meaning you just want to buy you want to buy low and sell high that's what everyone knows and wants to do and as a matter of fact even most experienced traders that's what they would prefer to do they would prefer to just buy low and sell high and, and just continue to do that. Shorting is, is great fun, but uh, for, for those who know how to do it, but to be honest, we mostly prefer to just, we want the market to go up, okay? So what is the current trend? Are you trading against the trend? Are you fighting the current direction of the market? See, I find this this happens a lot. People will say, man, I just, I have periods of time. And by the way, this was me too. I have periods of time in my trading where I just, I just have these moments of brilliance where everything that I do works. And then great big periods of time where nothing works at all. And I lose all of those gains right back to the market and sometimes more. Can, would anyone fess up to that, that that's happened to them, that their account yo-yos up and down, that you just have these periods that just look like you, you know, you're king of the world, everything's working. But then the next shoe drops and then you just feel like you've been hammered, right? Like, like you couldn't do anything right. You know, if if you paid for it, and so that that's one of those key factors on preparation, whether you should be trading or not. So questions I ask, and just a few of the questions I ask, you know, what's the current market trend? How many days has the market moved in this current trend? Now I'm not talking about, you know, like all of 2017 when the market went up. I'm going through counting days. No, I'm talking about the periods between pullbacks, the, the swing moves. I'm a swing trader, and that's what I focus on is, is swing trading, position trading. And so I'm looking at the common moves of the market. Nothing particularly fancy here, but I just have a, a kind of, um, it's not really a rule, it's a guideline. If the market has been up five to seven days in a row, five to seven days in a row, I start preparing for a pullback in the market, which means I start thinking about taking profits. I start reducing my trading. I don't trade as much. I don't trade as often. My frequency drops in trades if we're up that many days in a row because we all know how a chart moves we all know how the stock market any stock particularly um, um, stocks tend to move right we move up and then we either consolidate or we pull back right and then we move on up we're all it's always a test back and forth in the price action who's who's in control of the market and we always need that resting period to see if we can bring in more buyers. But we fail to recognize that all the time. We, we want to push every single day as a trading day. But not every day 
is a good day to enter new positions. Okay, so is, is the price action of the indexes, by the way, the price action of the indexes, are they above or below key price levels? Have you even looked at support and resistance? Where are you looking at entering this market? That's important. Is the market in consolidation? Now, a lot of people fear consolidation. I actually love consolidation in the overall market because if, if we have an overall uptrend in the market and the indexes are in a sideways consolidation, I'm going to continue to trade with the direction of the trend. That means there's going to be great stocks out there that are still maintaining their momentum when the market is just kind of resting. And what's nice about that is when the market is resting, guess what happens? We have lower volatility in our trading. It's easier to make money without taking pressure. Do we get the big whipping moves on those days? No. And I don't know about you, but I'm, that's what I want. I'm kind of lazy. I want the easy trade. Okay. I want the simple moves. And so if a, if a, a market is consolidating, there's often very good opportunity in there to go look for good quality trade setups that will have consistent smooth flow of price action. So considering where is support and resistance? Are we pressing against resistance? Are we reacting to support? What's going on in the news? One of the things that we've been plagued with here just recently and that everyone is dealing with this whip that we're seeing in the market one of the most difficult periods of trading in any market is when the market is reacting to political uncertainty. Because we know politics can flip things back and forth multiple times, even within an hour. We can get a news report on something. Well, maybe that news report was too drastic and then the market, the market drops and then all of a sudden the market comes right back. We get these, that political uncertainty really creates a lot of volatility in the market. And we've been seeing that here over the last couple of weeks, right? The market is just so unsure of itself right now. It doesn't know what to do. And every day we're getting these giant gaps. But we continue to try to push so hard. Our, our emotions are getting in the way of good common sense. Because we get all distracted by everything. Now, when I say what's in the news, I'm not telling you that what you should be doing is watching CNBC or Fox Business or whatever. I am not talking about that. Because I think that is one of the worst things you can do as a trader. I can tell you when I first went full time, I thought, man, this is going to be awesome. I can watch CNBC all day. I can stay right on top of the news. I can, you know what? <laughs> My trading results started to go down when I was doing that. This is no joke. In my household, I do not have any financial network hooked up. I, I, I'm on um, Dish Network out here in the middle of nowhere. And I had those channels shut off. I don't want to watch it. I avoid watching it like the plague because it gives me a bias. It biases my look at the, at the overall market and it messes me up. And it does that with most other people. Because what's the news, what are those channels intending to do? It's more about entertainment and keeping you engaged than it is actually giving you quality information. Okay? So, you know, do we need all the big drama and the fancy graphics and all of that kind of stuff for all this stuff? I mean, we, boom, 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 the big drama, you know, lead-in music and all that kind of stuff. 
We don't need that. But that's what happens every single day, and it creates a bias in us as a trader. So one of the things that I do to avoid that is I use, I use my smartphone. I have the CNBC app on my phone. I do not watch the news. What happens is my CNBC app pops up and gives me the headline. This is happening. Trump tweeted this. The, you know, um, the economic calendar, you know, had this report. Employment situation numbers are this. Because that's all I need to know. I need to know the things that are affecting the market. I need to be pre prepared for those things that will affect the market. And I also need to know what's going on in that economic calendar. And I'll show you how I do that here in just a second. Um, what's going on in earnings reports? We all know that, that stocks quickly react to earnings reports. Now, some earnings reports are more significant than others, right? When we start getting earnings reports from the big major banks, or we start hearing from Netflix and Google and those kind of companies, those affect the overall market. When we hear from the little, um, you know, small caps and um, kind of obscure companies out there that you you don't know what they are or what they do, when they report earnings, the market doesn't normally respond to that. But all of those names that you kind of know out there, when they have something big happen, the market responds emotionally. So we need to know who's reporting. We need to kind of stay on top of that and be prepared for that change in volatility, that change in energy or direction in the market. So you always need to be abreast of what's going on in earnings reports. I'll show you how I do that as well. What's going on in the current futures? The futures help us see what happened around the world during the night. They help us see how we're reacting to how Asian markets traded and European markets are trading when we come to the open. We get to see what is affecting the market right there in those futures numbers. Unfortunately, so many people just don't even check. They get all caught up in what's going on in CNBC or whatever. They get all wound up, and they end up getting all emotional about their trading, and they do stupid things that cost them money. Okay. Is the market exuberant? Is it over-exuberant? Is the market fearful? Is the market just plain confused? Would anyone kind of think of the last couple of weeks the market has just been confused? It doesn't know what to do with itself. The economy itself is chugging along like, like never before. Jobs are great. Wages are going up. Houses are being sold. Consumer sentiment is strong. Yet the market is uncertain because we're facing potential interest rate increases and then this so-called trade war. So it's uncertain. It's confused. It doesn't know what to do. And consequently, it thrashes around. And what it ends up doing for us retail traders, it chops our accounts to pieces. We give back all of our gains during periods like that and sometimes more. And we get completely destroyed during that period of time. Not only our account, but our confidence to trade. We, we, we end up looking at ourselves and saying, well, I, I obviously don't know what I'm doing. Because I'm getting torn up in this market. Now, believe it or not, I actually had a conversation with somebody that contacted me from Facebook last night. And this person on Facebook, this is no joke, this is what they said. Man, in the last couple of weeks, I've lost 40% of my account. But I've got on a huge bullish position right now, and as long as they don't mess it up over the weekend, I should come back. Now, is that trading or is that gambling? I mean, that is... 
<laughs> exactly. It's spec. It's speculation. It's gambling. It's it, it's trading emotionally. And in my conversation with this person, they were just so wrung out with emotion. It was more about right now, revenge trading. I got to get this money back. I got to get this money back. Rather than thoughtful trading. And so one of the things that we have to do as traders is when we're doing this analysis of the day, we have to re try and remove our bias. We all have a bias, right? Particularly, you know, if you're a long-only trader, hey, your bias is normally long. You want the market to go up. But if you allow that bias to cloud your vision of the current market condition, the chances are it's going to cost you more and more of your capital because you're not seeing the market for what it is. We want to press, we want to trade, we want that money back. Come on, give it back to me. And so we push at the absolute wrong time. And it ends up making the problem worse. I know there's people in here that experience that. You probably are experiencing that now. And I know how rough that is. That's a painful thing. And it destroys you as a trader because it kills your confidence and your ability. I can't even, you, you become, I can't even read a chart apparently. I don't know what's going on. Now, before I go over this chart, I want, or this, slide I wanted to go to the go to some charts and let's take a look at the Dow now I always look at the index ETFs because that's what we can actually trade and I try to take a look at these index ETFs without a bias and I try to see what's going on in the actual price action of the market now you can start with any index chart I don't care and I mark up these charts. Now you may look at this chart and say, oh my gosh, there's so much on here. How do you know all these lines? What's all that about? Well, if you'll notice these, these lines on here actually mark out specific points in the chart. I recognize when the market is in a downtrend. I recognize when the market is in an uptrend. I recognize when those trends have changed. I look for the next resistance levels and the next support levels. And I want to know, is the market, is the current price action respecting support? Is it respecting resistance? Are we closer to support than we are resistance? When we reach a point of resistance, is it wise to be buying with both hands when we reach a price resistance in the market? Or have we just set ourselves up buying at the exact point where the market may turn and go the other direction? Right, chicken. Price is king. Price is the most important indicator out there. Ten times over the most important indicator out there. So what is price telling us here? Well, if we look at the Dow, we're kind of, we've been flipping. And by the way, the range in the Dow over the last two weeks has been over 500 points. And sometimes we have moved more than 500 points in just part of the day, and then it goes the other direction before it's over. Price of the price of anything, Bruce. Price of the indexes, price of the actual stock. Price is king. There is no indicator that will be better than price. None whatsoever. Price is the only thing that makes us money. There's never been an indicator that's ever paid us a dime. 
It's only when price moves we get paid. But it's one of the last things most traders look at because we get so tied up in all these, all these indicators and all these things out there that are supposed to tell us whether or not the market is good for us to trade or the stock is good for us to trade. Now, I will submit to you, you may be absolutely committed to those indicators. But let me ask you this question. Is it proving to be working in your account? That's something I had to come to grips with years and years ago where I was absolutely committed to all these indicators, all these scans, everything that I learned, all this stuff that I put together. Man, this is what I have to have. But when I looked at my account, it wasn't improving. I had all the things I thought I needed to have. It wasn't working. Are you evaluating those things that you believe is an absolute must to see whether or not they're actually doing anything for you? Sydney, Sydney, your um, price, volume, and time. Price has to already have moved, time has to already have passed, and volume has to already occurred. That's how almost all indicators are calculated. So they're always lagging. They're always behind price. So if we focus more on price than all those other outside things, we can see what's actually going on. So let's take a look. We've had about a 500-point range in the diamonds here, or in the Dow, I should say not in the diamonds themselves. We've had about a 500 point range in the Dow in the last two weeks, just bouncing back and forth. Now what I would ask you is if you go back when this all, when we broke down here, this gap down and we broke down, tested the 50 day moving average and we're down in here and we've moved up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down. Draw a straight line across there. What have we actually accomplished? Almost nothing until yesterday. We actually had our very first day of follow through in the Dow yesterday. The first follow through day in about seven days. Now, as wonderful as that is, we also know that it's Friday. Trade tariffs just kicked in. Okay? We know anything can happen over the weekend. So we have to think about that when we're preparing for how much risk we carry over for the weekend. But if you look at this chart and you look at it objectively, we are reacting to some price support down here, right? But we're still below price resistance. So we are in a trading range, a sideways, very choppy trading range. These periods right here are very, very difficult to trade, even for very experienced traders. Unless you're a very quick intraday trader, these periods will chop you to pieces. If you continue to push and continue to try to trade at the same level, it's when the market was actually showing trend, creating higher lows and higher highs. The market has changed. Have you changed? Okay, let's look at the SPY, SPY. What's the SPY doing? Well, yesterday, Friday, the SPY actually finally broke through resistance. We've had a price resistance in the chart, and that price resistance has served to hold this market down for quite a few days. Okay? Now, all of a sudden, we follow through and we pop through this level right here. But we're not finished up, right? That didn't fix the problem yet. 
here was our uptrend. We have not recovered the uptrend just yet. Okay, so once a stock, and I ask this question to people all the time, once a stock or an index crosses above a resistance area, does that automatically mean that that has become support? Would you guys say, looking at this chart, that just because we crossed above it, that is now support? Yeah, Tom, Malcolm, correct. It's not support. It's not support until price proves that it's support, that it's supported by buyers. There's no proof yet. So that means if you were to chase this move, is there any doubt in anybody's mind that the possibility exists Monday morning we gap significantly lower? I'm not saying that's going to happen. I'm saying the possibility exists. So if you don't have some assurance of where support is, where's the support now in this chart? How much risk are you willing to take? Are you willing to take that risk all the way back down to here? Because that's where support is. So it's that objective look at the price action of the chart that's extremely important, and not just in the indexes, but in the actual charts that you're trading. What is the current market condition? I would tell you right at this moment, current market condition is showing some hopefulness that we are recovering as of Friday. Showing some hopefulness that we are recovering, but it's not out of the woods yet. It's not bullish yet. There's a big question mark in here, isn't there? Will the bulls continue to support that price? Because we are below resistance levels overall in the market. Let's take a look at the Qs real quick. We want to look at all the indexes. Qs showing much stronger. One good thing about the, the, the Qs, the SPY, um, if we look at... Um, Standard moving average is the 50-day moving average. The Qs actually held on to the 50-day moving average. They never, ever really crossed below it. They held on. They rallied back up. And on Friday, what did we do? We broke back through this level, closed above it, just barely, closed above it at the end of the day. Okay, but we are right at price resistance. Do we buy at price resistance? One of the biggest problems, one of the hardest things for me to get past when I was trading was this thing where I would see a, a market or a stock after a significant pullback try to start moving back up. And I would immediately jump on that and fail to recognize that I was buying that stock or that index directly at the point where it could fail. How many of you have had this issue where you buy a stock and you're just almost immediately punished? So much of the time that that happens, it's almost like you have a complex about it. You may have even said to yourself, well, I'm going to go ahead and buy this, but I'm probably going to lose. It's the failure to recognize that you're at price resistance that's causing that problem. I struggled with this. Guys, I'm telling you, uh, if you're there, I feel for you because I struggled with this for a long time. Because I would get caught up. You know what this right here is? Jumping in and buying everything up you can right here on that candle. You know what that's called? Fear of missing out. 
right? That's the fear of missing out. You're chasing it. Oh my gosh, I'm going to miss this thing. And what ends up happening, happening is you jump on it too soon and it takes your head off. Get your account. And so we have to recognize those points in the market. Let me show you a chart. Like this. When you look at the chart of Microsoft, and by the way, this is a weekly chart of Microsoft. When you look at that weekly chart, does that chart give you any kind of confidence at all? Do you see a smooth, consistent, deliberate price action trend here? That's what we're looking for when we trade. We're looking for that smooth, consistent, deliberate price action. That's what we want in our trading, right? We want consistency. We want to see that win-loss ratio improving with those consistent, strong, deliberate price action trends. You can look at that chart and have some confidence, right? If this stock pulls back or consolidates and then breaks out, can we have confidence in this trend? How often has this produced buy signals that have paid without failure, have paid without failure, How many times that that, does that have to occur before we believe it's true? So if that's the case for a chart like this, isn't the same case if we look at a chart like Intel that we suddenly have a problem? that all of a sudden this moves down and the first thing that pops into our mind when we see this bullishness come into the trade, oh my gosh, I'm going to miss out. I got to buy it. Now, wait a minute. What happened here? Intel broke its trend. Intel is moving up to test resistance. That's all we know right now. We don't know if buyers can actually push it through resistance. We don't know if buyers will support it if it can break through resistance. So it's the same thing when you look at those index charts. Let's take a look at IWM. Oops. Take a look at IWM. What's IWM been telling us here? Let's take a look at what a good condition looks like in a chart. Okay. We have a chart that struggled right here. We saw a double top high. Broke down, but it held support. Its next move tested a resistance level and failed, but it held trend. The good buy in here for me is none of these places. Can we make money in those? Yes, we can. But the good buy for me is when we prove that we can break the downtrend Hold is support, and buyers step in here, supporting price. Buyers stepping in, supporting price. Consolidating. Buyers step in, supporting price. Those are my trades.
And you know, the cool thing is, is you can wait. We have the ability, if we look at these charts objectively, we have the ability and honestly, the personal responsibility, the personal responsibility to our capital to wait for the better clues. Because here's the thing that I know to be absolutely true. It's never going to be the retail traders that decide when a downtrend is over. It will be the institutions and the high frequency trading firms that make that decision. They're the ones with the trillions of dollars that they're moving in to trades, moving into the market. They're the ones that decide when a stock is going to reverse and start going up or reverse and start going down. It's our job as a retail trader to recognize when they've made that decision and then just follow them. Don't predict it. Don't try to pick a bottom. Don't try to pick a top. Wait for them to prove and then get into the trade. Because I know this also to be true. It's far more important that you have quality trades than a quantity of trades. Would anyone agree with that? When the market has been like that it has over the last two weeks, it doesn't matter how many positions you have on, didn't really improve anything, did it? In fact, probably made it worse. The harder you push, the worse it got. It's the quality of trades that are more important than the quantity of trades. And what we have to do is be patient and wait for the quality trades. Okay, so now we've kind of we've kind of covered those charts. So how do I go about? You know, I talked about some of you know, the other things. What's going on in the news? Well, I'm gonna. Uh, there's a lot of places where you can go get this information, but every single day I look over the economic calendar. I want to see those big events that could move the market. Okay, now this was last week's calendar here. Okay, but I just wanted to show you, it doesn't take long to look. When you look at an economic calendar, depending on where you look at them at, if, they're, if they have this red mark on them right here, they're highly likely to move the market with that number. What time does that report come out? 10 o'clock. Might want to pay attention, right? It doesn't mean that you have to be watching that news report because I never do. I don't watch and see what the actual number was. I watch and see what the price reaction is. But I never want to fail to be ignorant to the situation that something could move the market. So I need to be on top of that. I need to be prepared. So every single day, I look at the economic calendar. I see what could affect the market. And I register that as to how I want to plan my day. Yes, the green also means potentially market moving. The red ones are to affect the market, where the green are just likely, okay? They have a significant impact at times, if there's surprise numbers in them particularly. If, if they come out as expected, they'll oftentimes not be a really big reaction if they come out as expected. If there's a surprise in the number though, that's when the market reacts in a really big way and can react positively or negatively really, really quickly. Okay. 
I want to look a day ahead and see what's going on a day ahead. On Thursday, we knew we had the employment situation report and international trade coming. And these happen before the market opens. Now, we were in good shape because these numbers came in very strong. But what if you had just tied, this was a bullish day on Thursday, and you'd tossed all you could into the market on trades on Thursday, and you were ignorant to the fact that these big reports were coming out, you carried too much risk into the overnight, and the next morning these reports were bad and the market gaps down sharply. That is a, a, a completely normal thing that happens. It happens every day to traders because they're not taking the time to prepare their thoughts of what is going to affect the market. Okay, what is going to affect the market? Uh, Diana, we have several trades on. Some are stock, most are option trades. Some are spread trades, some are directional. We just closed a trade on Coca-Cola for about 33% um, win. I closed it on Thursday. Some people closed it for a little bit more on Friday. Um, <clears throat> um, I, I'm in a Procter & Gamble trade. I'm up 40% in Procter & Gamble. I closed half of that trade earlier this week for a, um, a, a, a really nice game. Okay, and I'm holding the rest of the trade right now. We're in a short trade on um, NVIDIA, I mean not NVIDIA, um, Intel. We're up like 89% on that. Yep, I closed NIHD, it was a stock trade. I closed it on Friday, took out about 8% on that trade. As of Friday, all the trades that we're in in right-way options, none are, have, have a current loss. None. Now, that's not normal. Okay. <laughs> I cannot tell you we win every trade. We do not win every trade. But because I'm so overly, well, I don't want to say overly, but I'm so heavily focused on the quality of the market. Exactly. Quality, not quantity. I'm so um, heavily focused on the quality of the trade that I'm taking and what the overall market is doing as I trade. Yeah, KHC, we're doing fabulous in KHC. Because of that, we are making money. And in a time when people are just struggling like crazy. Okay. Now, if you, I keep my own, I keep stats on on my personal trading. You can now go back years and look at my in 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 my records in my binders and average all of the trades together, and I win somewhere between about seventy and seventy five percent of my trades. And it's because I work really, really hard at being picky and prepared in my trading. Remember, guys, trading is a business. Anytime you're in business, you have the risk of loss. You're making business decisions, not emotional decisions. And you cannot make good quality business decisions without preparation and planning. Okay, so this is part of my morning ritual every morning. And by the way, I'm in front of my computer at 5 a.m. Central Time every trading day because I am looking at current positions, readjusting stop losses, going through um, 
um, um, watch list for potential trades. I'm checking the futures. I'm checking the economic calendar. I'm preparing for my trading day. Oh yeah, here, let me um, give you this link. By the way, all you have to do is, there's tons of places where you can get the economic calendar. Um, um, just, just type in a search bar, economic calendar, and there'll be a ton of choices of where you can go to get it. Okay. All right, so I checked the economic calendar. I also want to check on earnings. Now, I use my Thinkorswim um, application for that. I use Thinkorswim as a broker, but I always go to Thinkorswim, and I look at what's going on. So if I, if I click out here for a next week, I can, I can really quickly see on Monday – at least at this point on Monday, we're looking at nine companies reporting. I can quickly look through this list down here and see whether or not these are nine companies that will be moving the market. Do you see a whole lot of big recognizable names in there? No, probably not. However, if you happen to be trading one of these stocks, or thinking about buying one of these stocks, it's a good idea to know when they report. Preparation. Preparation gives you better trading results. Now, I started mentioning in Friday's blog, by the way, anybody who's interested, the blog is free. The blog is free. You can come on over. Yeah, briefing.com is another great place for earnings, and, and um, you can even get your calendars there. Yeah. In the morning blog, I started mentioning that third quarter earnings are getting ready to start. The official kickoff of third quarter earnings is going to be Friday. Anybody see anybody on there that you recognize? Citibank, J.P. Morgan, PNC Financial, Wells Fargo. Do you think Friday could be a market-moving day of earnings? So you want to know when those kind of things are happening and be prepared for that. So you want to look at those earnings reports. Now, I'm going to go back here to my chart. And you guys, um, I, I mentioned, is the market fearful every single day? I take a look at a VIX chart. What is the market doing? Now, remember, the VIX moves opposite the market normally. Okay. If the market is fearful, like we were right here at the end of January, first part of February, fear rises. The VIX is what they call the fear index. It tells us when volatility is coming into the market, when we're fearful of what's going on. That changes the way things trade. It becomes a lot more difficult and a lot more volatile when the market becomes fearful. When the market is not fearful, we see the VIX pulling back. That makes our option trades cheaper, right? Because implied volatility drops. Prices will start to become more deliberate when there's not a great deal of fear in the market. So every single day, I am looking at the VIX. Are we fearful? Are we over-exuberant? What's going on here in the market? I want to know that. I want to be prepared for that. Okay? 
And, and, I, and I know a lot of you may not have access to this, but I, whoops. I go to, um, we have an indicator. Uh, it's not really an indicator. Um, it's a, but I use it as an indicator. It's the four week new high, new low ratio. Okay, so it's it's measuring stocks that are making a four week new high and a four week new low. Now, if you look at it like this, it makes absolutely no sense. What I do is I plot it on a chart like this. I plot it just as a line chart, black and white, you know, black uh, background. Um, and what I'm looking for, if you look back on this, and I can go back even on a weekly, look at how consistent this is. When we're up here at the top of this range, and this is going back, clear back to 2010, guys. When we get up here to the top of this range, what happens to the market? We start pulling back. When we get clear down here to the bottom of this range, what happens to the market? We start to rally. Okay, we start to rally. <clears throat> so in that chart, if we go back here to a daily and we look at this, this is what I call the bearish reversal zone. We get up in here and we're a little bit over exuberant. That doesn't mean that we're immediately going to fall. It means that I have to be careful with adding new trades because the likelihood of a pullback is high. It, the market can still go higher. I, I want to make no mistake on that. This is not a buy-sell indicator. But this should, when you see this, and you see the consistency of what happens when we come up here, should not, shouldn't this give you pause? Should I be buying with both hands right now? Wouldn't this be a clue I may be buying at price resistance? So I'm doing that analysis of the market. Should I be actively just buying, buying, buying right now? The answer to that is no. It's not available on TOS. It's not. Um, if you guys are interested in in having this, let me. I'll give you a, a coupon. Uh, Donna may have this already queued up. I don't know. Um, I'm going to give you a coupon. I did a class on TC2000. I, I, I got it here, Donna. Um, I, I gave a class on TC2000. I told TC2000 I was I was doing it, and they gave me this coupon. And they said anybody that wants um, to give us a try or try out TC2000, um, you can save 25 bucks. So I don't care whether you do or you don't. But if you're if you're seeing what I do here as being useful information, the way I look at a chart, the way I use a chart all of those kind of things and you want to give it a try there's a way to try it and it'll save you 25 bucks okay so I'm just it, as far as I know it's still working so go ahead and, and take advantage I do know that um, TC2000 if you just buy the charting package I'm not talking about the brokerage part of TC2000 if you just buy the charting package you can buy the gold package I think with the coupon it's like $274 for the year it's one trade, guys. One trade. And trust me on this, I love Thinkorswim. I do. I've been with Thinkorswim for years. Okay? They're a great platform. When it comes to their charting, I can, I can find charts and get to charts way faster with TC2000 than you will ever be able to do in think or swim. Trust me on that. You can ask other members in here that use TC2000. 
if if they agree because i'm telling you it's head and shoulders above in the charting ability over toss you will get there quicker if efficiency is important to you check out tc2000 okay so no this isn't on thinkorswim but i gotta tell you guys i find this tool almost invaluable to me because it helps me recognize that time when we might be just a little bit over exuberant i don't like using the words overbought or oversold those get way overused and when you use the term overbought or oversold it creates a bias Okay, so I don't like using those terms, but I do like using the terms of like exuberant. We're, we're a little bit, maybe we got just a little bit carried away on Friday. A little bit exuberant maybe. So I need to be cautious. I need to be cautious. If we're a little bit bearish, if we're clear down here, all of a sudden we're just a little bit bearish. That's what I need to be thinking about watching for good quality entries into trades. Because the market is probably going to start lifting up here soon. Okay? That's the kind of evaluation that I talk about. And, and that I mean, I do this every single day before the market opens. Before the market opens. And I can tell you guys without a shadow of a doubt, it is absolutely essential for me to maintain my win-loss ratio, to maintain my winning track record, to do that preparation every single day. Okay? Every single day. Let's take a quick look. Let's run back and jump back here to um, this presentation. Because what is the next thing that you need to think about um, when you think about your trading? What's the next thing? Well, have you evaluated you? Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but have you evaluated you? Are you prepared or are you tired or sick? Somebody been kicking your cat around all day long and you're just frustrated. What's going on with you personally? We all have those assessments that we need to do every single day of our trading. Are we getting emotional? Are we making good business decisions or are we trading emotionally? Are you calm? Are you upset? Are you confident? Are you overly confident? I see that a lot. Overly confident. They see a candle signal that they like. Hey, there's a bullish engulfing candle. The market has to go up from here. And <laughs> no, it does not. Overly confident is a major problem in a lot of people's trading. It's the same as being overly fearful. Hey, by the way, anybody that has to leave and wants to watch this, I will, once I finish this up, I will upload this to my YouTube channel. Okay? And I'm about finished up, by the way. So you can go over to YouTube and watch it if you want. So make sure you're doing that self-check every day. Where are you? Having a fight with your, your spouse? That's going to affect your trading. Trust me on that. That will affect your trading. Okay? So do that self-check every single day. Now, if you want some help with this stuff, Thank you, Donna. If you want some help with this stuff, every single day that the market is open, I 
do a quick video. It's about nine minutes to 12 minutes long every single day. I run through all of those things that I just did. I run through them in that quick video in the morning. I try to look at the charts without a bias and give you a clear picture of what's going on for that day to help you prepare for your day. If you've never been to my YouTube channel, please do me a favor. Run over there to, just go to that link right there, click on that subscribe button. When you click on that subscribe button, there'll be a little pop-up that opens up. Inside that little pop-up, there's a bell. Click on the bell. And what that'll do is notify you every morning when I drop this video in there. It's always there before the market opens. Okay, it's free, no cost. And if that helps you, if you think that can help you prepare your day better, please feel free to take advantage of that. I do that, <clears throat> I, I, don't even, I don't even put, um, I have the ability I could have ads on these. I could make money from this. Okay? YouTube would allow me to put ads on these videos so that I could make a little bit of money. I don't do that. That's not why I do this. It's not about making money. This is about helping other people do better in their trading. I have a passion for that. We have a passion for that. Hit and run candlesticks and right way options. We want to help you be better traders. And if I can put something out like, out like that, it doesn't take me that terrible long to do, that can be helpful to you, please take advantage of it. And also, please, feel free to share it. It's out there for everyone, okay? Out there for everyone. I try to have it, um, I try to have it posted on YouTube. By the way, it gets posted to Facebook as well. Twitter, stock twits, all of those kind of things. But um, I try to have it, it's, it goes on to YouTube first, and I try to have it there between 7 and 7.30 in the morning. Central time, central time. Sometimes it's there a little bit early, but it's usually always there before 7.30. I try really hard to get it in there that 7 o'clock time for period. Um, yes, um, Valen, um, if you just look above, maybe Donna could repost that link. My YouTube channel, as soon as I finish up today, I'm going to render this video and it will be on YouTube for you to watch. Okay. So it will be available. All right. Every single day, every single day, Hit and Run Candlesticks puts out free trade picks. And not just your average free trade picks. Not that we're just throwing something out there for folks. So Ed, Ed and Rick are doing this. They put out a chart with an explanation of why they think this is a trade that's setting up. It could be a trade. And they also produce for free a fully planned trade. This is a piece of software we use. It's called Trader Vision 2020. You can check it out on our website. We have that available. We actually created that software. This software helps you plan and trade professionally. Okay, but you don't have to have the software necessarily. Every single day you come to our website and look for the free trade and it will be there with a fully laid out trade plan. And by the way, over the last, I want to say six weeks or something since I started this, they're up about $2,500. just in those plan trades. Probably want to take advantage of that every single day. Those come out, okay? Free daily trade picks. And then if you guys um, have any interest in what we do at all, 
please, you know, run over there to hitrundcandlesticks.com. Okay? Right here on the on the on the website. Click that 30-day trial button. And you can get 30 days access to Hit and Run Candlesticks for $14 for the for $14. And it's completely all access. Okay, we don't we don't hide anything. Anyone from Rightway Options will tell you every single trade, stock or option that I buy, I report on that trade every single day during the live session. Whether it's a winner, loser, how I might need to adjust it or or take profits or or close the trade for a loss or whatever, every single day. Every trade I make is shared. I don't know where you're going to go to get that. Rightway Options does, does two hours of live training every single day, plus these webinars on uh, the first and third Saturday morning. So tons of information is out there. So please, if you have any interest at all, if you would like to see how you could improve your trading, all you got to do is click on that free trial button. Select the one that you want or both. 28 bucks for a month, I mean, really. <clears throat> you can't hardly beat that. So take a look at us if you have any kind of, of, of idea about um, your trading. So that was the last slide. And one of the things I, I did have a question on trades. Let me show you in here. Um, this is something I do directly in front of everybody. I trade this account as if it were a $10,000 account. Okay, and what I'm what I want to point out to you right now, and by the way, as a ten thousand dollar account, I want you to see these contracts. There's not one of these trades in here that's more than a one contract trade right now. One contract. Last year we did about a ninety seven percent return on the account. So far this year we're up about twenty five percent. Okay, current trade, Netflix, we're up 23%. Current trade, NVIDIA, we're up 93%. Current trade, SWKS, we're up 61%. Now, I've messed this up. I haven't gotten everything over here into this account. So we're also in, and, and I don't show any of my stock trades in here. I'm in UAA. I'm up 16% on the stock itself. I've made um, well over $4,000 on options on UAA so far this year. We're in um, Intel. Current Intel trade, we're up about 90% in Intel. Okay, we're in Procter & Gamble. Up 40% right now on Procter & Gamble. Okay, um, I'm in a stock trade, MNST, Monster Beverages. Stock trade itself, only up about 4% on that trade at the moment. So every trade I share. By the way, anybody like that chart? <laughs> there we go, there's a daily chart. That's a pretty chart. <clears throat> Here's the P&G trade, or PG trade, Procter & Gamble. This was the entry right here this day. Hit Run Candlesticks is open almost 24-7, Tre Trevor, if you are interested in Hit Run Candlesticks. Right Way Options only ups, opens for two hours uh, um, during the day. We're open, well, I say only, uh, I have a really hard time sticking to a two-hour time frame. We tend to always go long. Um, um, we open at 11 
a.m. Eastern time to 1 p.m. That's the scheduled time every day. Okay? <clears throat> every day. So, folks, hopefully you got something good out of this today. Hopefully you, you understand uh, now how important it is to um, stay on top of what's going on in your trading, to, to take a look at the overall market and to make an assessment as to what's going on. And believe me on this, if you do this step, you will see an improvement in your trading. It will also improve your emotional aspect of your trading because you'll, you'll see that there's times when it's better to just sit on your hands and avoid trade debt and protect your capital. Okay? Trevor, if you go to the YouTube channel, go to the YouTube channel, Scroll down to um, one of the video series. It's called Consistent Profits. I'll just show you right here. Right here. Education series on consistent profits. If you go to the very first video in that series, move right down here in the description. Okay. You can go straight to our website. You can pick up uh, the volatility stop indicator ebook that has all of the code in there for it. Okay? It's right here. The link to Consistent Profits ebook. You just click on that. Ebook is there. Okay. Absolutely. Please do me a favor if you do that. I'm giving you that stuff free. I'm giving, there's five videos there to teach you how to use it. Click on the subscribe button, please. Please click on that subscribe button. Not asking for anything else. You know, David, that's true. Um, you get that that sense of the you know that you're missing out, that you that you wish that um, you just want to trade every day, right? We didn't get dressed up and sat down in front of our computer for nothing. We want to trade, but when the market is not set to put odds in your favor for trading, then we're we're flipping over to gambling. And the, <laughs> well, we get dressed at least, hopefully. I'm not going to say all of us do. The charts are naked. <laughs> the charts are naked. <laughs> uh, no, do I wear a shoot, suit and tie? at my computer you are out of your mind no <laughs> pajama pajamas dressed that's perfectly good oh uh, william j yeah we we call what i call my charts here is the naked chart notice that i've got volume down here but the only reason volume is there is so it it um, truncates my chart a little bit instead of spreading it spreading it out from top to bottom. Um, I trade based on price action. I don't use indicators for 99.9% .9 of all of my trades come from this chart right here. Naked charts. I do look at volume, Dale, but it's not very important to me. 
most of the time. The the times that I really notice it is if it is a a stock that just has very little volume. If I happen to run across those that have very little volume. Now that's rare that I do because I work from a watch list and that's no joke. I show that all the time. I work from a watch list. I don't chase around a scan. I work from a simple watch list of good quality charts that fit me personally. They fit me for volume. They fit me for trend. They fit me for price. That's what I work from, I, and almost all of my trades come from there. It varies. It varies. I mean, the, the market varies, right, Mike? Uh, I mean, sometimes there's lots and lots of charts, sometimes not so many. So it varies based on how the market is performing. Okay? But remember, our job as traders is to look at charts. Okay. One of the things that I think is kind of interesting is we spend way too much time. In fact, I call it majoring in minor things. We will major all of our time in trying to create the perfect combination of indicators and scan to narrow down the trade to give us the five trades stocks that we should look at today. Because we don't want to do any more than that. Um, trust me, guys, that doesn't work. I spent years trying to do that. You've probably already proved that in your account. You're just not willing to give it up yet. That doesn't work. So what I do is I find a trending chart. I mark up that chart and I make the trade come to me. Literally make the trade come to me. This trade right here, that pink line right there, that's a price alert. It alerted me when the stock popped up through there and I entered the position. I make the trade come to me. I don't chase the trade. So I work from a watch list. A qualified watch list where stocks are trending, price action is deliberate, and almost every single one of my trades come from that list. It's much more efficient with your time. It's easier to do. You're not racing around. You're not rushing all the time. And the trades literally come to you. You guys, um, anybody that's been in the room can, can testify to the fact that I have alerts popping off all the time. Sounds like I've got a, I use a car horn, horn uh, alert, and it sounds like I've got a fleet of taxis out front of my house that, honking their horn because I have so many of these alerts that pop off because I'm watching all of those charts. Because of that, we take advantage in right way options of a lot of, we get the advantage of a lot of great trades because I'm watching these charts. I'm not chasing them. Yep, trending stocks, and we look for low-risk entry points. And that's a discussion of another class. So please, guys, thank you for sticking around today. You guys are diehards here. Um, we've gone an hour and a half. Um, thank you for being here today. hope you got something out of this today. Hopefully you uh, have picked up something here that um, can help you as a trader. I know for me... When I go to the market prepared, I'm relaxed. I, I, I am not rushed. I'm ready to trade. And that move makes me a better, more comfortable trader. All right. Thank you guys very much. Does anyone need any of those links um, again? Um, if you're interested in that coupon on TC2000, believe me, guys, this makes no difference to me. Um, <laughs> TC2000 
you know, it, it is what it is. I'm just sharing that out there. Um, you can get a coupon on that. You can um, take a look at Rightway Options 30 day trial for $14. Um, yeah, yeah, $14. You can have a 30 day trial, all access pass for 14 bucks. You can either do $14 for hit and run candlesticks, which, by the way, hit and run candlesticks is mostly stock based, okay? They're looking, their focus is mostly on the stock trading, swing trading of stocks. Right way options, of course, has more of a focus onto options trading, okay? But I do trade stocks as well, and I share those stock trades with you. On that so for 28 bucks you can have both for the entire month seriously um, the the simple trade in coke that we took this week here was the entry here a one contract trade would have paid for a couple of months of right way options Okay, so check us out. Check us out. Um, thanks everyone for being here today. I do appreciate it. You guys are, are awesome. Please check out my YouTube channel. Click on that subscribe button. Get that free information that's there. Um, I will, by the way, I will, by the way, get started on doing a kind of a tutorial. I get a lot of questions about how I use TC2000 and how you know how I can get to stock so quickly. Um, I'm going to be doing tutorial videos here soon, and I'll be posting those on the YouTube channel as well on on how I get to those stocks so quickly. So please check back. There's always free information being posted there. Thank you guys. You guys are very kind. Thank you, Peter. Um, everyone have an awesome, awesome weekend. Be careful out there if you're in that real hot area of the country. Be careful. Um, heat exhaustion is real. <laughs> Try to stay cool, stay safe, and I hope to see you all back here bright and early Monday morning, everyone.